Hello there, and welcome back to The Closet Historian and back to Side Hustlin', again, my casual diary-ish series. Again, I'm just going to repeat this every time at the beginning of these now, I guess, um, where I just basically vlog about myself. So, you know, in the grand tradition of YouTube of old, you know, and I have coffee. So that's good. It's not even like, you know, a fake, there, can you see, there, there really is coffee in there. And um, I take my coffee with honey, like a little drizzle of honey, and soy milk vanilla creamer, in case anyone's ever wondering. I don't think that's very interesting, but oh well. This year's goals video has a lot more, you know, context and, uh, I don't know, like macro level thinking as compared to last year, where of course, when I was making my goals for 2020, I had no idea what 2020 was going to be like. And, you know, like, I, I guess ever making goals is kind of an optimistic and like nice, hopeful thing to be doing because it assumes that the year won't have a global pandemic. So it's nice that we used to live in a world where we weren't thinking that that could happen at any time, almost in some ways, you know? But at the same time, it would have been good if that world also had a plan in case it did happen, I guess, which it seems all of us didn't really have a plan, <laughs> did we? Anyway, I digress. So of course, thinking about my goals for the next year, I'm imagining that the year is going to be on like, or at least I'm going to be on lockdown for the majority of the year still, at least I'm thinking, uh, my birthday is in the middle of the year. My birthday's in July. I'll be turning 30 here in 2021. And I'm assuming I'll be in lockdown still uh, by that time. Like I, I doubt that the majority of people around me and me well, included will be vaccinated by July. It just doesn't seem that organized so far. So I highly doubt that the world will be back to normal by then. Normally I like to go thrifting for my birthday, which of course I didn't get to do in 2020 either, but you know, fair enough, that's fine. I don't mind. Luckily as an introvert, it just isn't that strange to spend my majority of time uh, inside, in my office, in my bedroom with myself. I keep myself entertained pretty well. Like uh, I don't really ever get bored, but we'll talk about that a little later perhaps. Once again, I have my notes here just so I can remember what my own goals are. To be fair, this is again, like most of my side hustling videos, it's just a way for me to um, say out loud what I'm already like have going on and buzzing in my brain. So this is just like putting into paper, putting into video, which is like my form of diary. I don't really keep a journal or a diary or I don't other than in video form. So it's just kind of my way of documenting where my head is at at any given time. And so I don't like keep my goals anywhere throughout the year. I don't have a vision board or goals list or calendar anything like that uh, around me at any time. So this is kind of the only way I put these things into a physical almost form, even though it is, I guess, digital. But my first goal for 2021 is to sew less. This shouldn't be that surprising. Uh, last year I made way too many things, uh, both in the sense that it kept me very busy, which was why I was making very many things, which meant I didn't get enough um, or as much as I wanted to reading and writing done last year. So, cause I was sewing all the time, but also because like, I don't need that many clothes. In fact, I don't need, need any more clothes. Um, but of course I, I want to make new things all the time because I'm a fashion designer. What do you want from me? And luckily because of my job, I do get to make things for that. So I still will be making a few things of course in 2021, probably I'm gonna set a goal of maybe like half as many things max that I made last year. So last year I ended up making 61 finished garments in 2021. I would like to keep that number under 30. We'll see, we'll see how I do. But in relation to this, like, so less things goal, I also want to buy less fabric. I really only wanna buy fabric for costuming projects next year, cause I have plenty here in my stash for normal sort of clothing sewing um, and just like regular demonstration projects. I have tons of fabric that has been in my stash for years that I would like to go ahead and just do some stash busting and bust through the kind of stuff that I already have. Of course, I don't have a lot of, you know, I don't know, silk taffeta laying around as we know. So when it comes to maybe making new costuming projects next year, I will have to invest in fabric for that. But other than that, I'm going to try and do like a fabric low buy for 2021. I'm hoping I have placed my last mood order until my birthday. That's my goal is to not place another mood order until I allow myself one for my birthday. This is currently my goal. <laughs> we will see. Keeping me off of mood. I might have to set one of those like child you know, like parent locks for websites where you can block certain websites and block mood. 
I'm not proud, okay? If I buy another cotton sateen, I'm gonna be really mad at me, you know? I gotta use what I have. And related to my sewing far too many things in general, not just last year, but for the last decade, I have um, on next to my list here, have a big closet declutter slash curation. So that is something I will be sharing here on the channel. I'm gonna go through my closet and try and downsize a little bit. Again, as much as I love sewing and fashion and clothes and accessories huh, and like styling and things like that, I just think my wardrobe, thanks to my voracious, voracious, ferocious, ferocious, and ver voracious. I'll put the word I think I mean here. Uh, sewing habits, I have a lot of stuff and there's just no conceivable way that I'll ever, especially in lockdown, <laughs> but even if the world were to open back up, no conceivable way I could wear really all the things I have like in a regular rotation. And therefore I just need to curate down to what I love the very, very most and sell or donate some stuff just because I feel like my wardrobe has bloated to a size that I just am not super comfortable with. Um, I, again, live at home. I don't have a ton of storage space. I don't have a, a separate bedroom set aside all for my clothing and accessories. I'd love to have like a closet room one day in life, but it seems a very far away. So I need to downsize a little bit more just so that things fit into my life a little bit better and sort of fit my lifestyle, or at least the lifestyle I wish I was currently living. Uh, even right now, I think I have more than... I would need to even if I were as social and busy as, I don't know, my imaginary version of myself seems to be. So I'll be having a big declutter. You will be seeing the process of that because everybody, the internet loves that kind of video. So we'll be con marrying or whatever real soon here. Now, next on my list, and I realize now after having mentioned it in my last side hustling video and getting a little bit of feedback, <laughs> which, um, that is controversial, which I don't think it should be, but is, is to get vaccinated. I'm super hyped about it. It's one of my biggest goals for 2021. I cannot wait to get vaccinated. Now, something to know about me in general is that I'm a big fan of uh, science and also like medical science and uh, like advancement in general. Like for example, modern dentistry, huge fan. I'm so glad that I haven't had to die of like a toothache. It's pretty great, you know? Um, people always, you know, it's, it's a very common question, especially for vintage lovers to get is like which era like, oh, you belong in another era or like which time period would you like to live in? And it's like, as crappy as this one occasionally is, um, th this one, because again, modern dentistry and like refrigeration and the internet, which is my favorite thing of all things. I love a lot of things, but the internet wins. But for those out there who find my fervent desire to get vaccinated strange or unnerving, I will go ahead and link to a recent video by Sostein, who goes over, you know, all the, the information about the vaccine, I think in quite detail, because she happens to be a medical doctor. So if you don't want to listen to me, some random girl who does some sewing sometimes, fair, go listen to someone who does really good sewing and also happens to be a medical doctor as well. So check that out. The link will be below. And now next I'm on day two of, and it's already interesting. And that is to develop a better relationship with Instagram. Um, it's, you know, I don't have like a, problem with Instagram. I mean, there's so, there's so many different problems you can have with social media, you know? Um, my issue with Instagram, my chief issue, I think, is that it's just distraction available 24 seven at any time on my phone. So if I'm waiting for something to download, like waiting for footage to transfer over, I can look at Instagram. If I'm having lunch, I can look at Instagram. When I wake up, I look at Instagram for like a half hour. Like on average every day, I don't actually, I didn't have screen time turned on, so I couldn't see how much time I was spending each day on Instagram, but I'm sure it was like a couple of hours, not like crazy numbers. I don't think it was like six hours or anything like, anything like that. Um, but of course I will never now know. Um, but I know I was spending at least like a half hour in the morning. So it was the first thing I looked at when I woke up. And then usually was the last thing I was doing was browsing Instagram before bed for like another half hour, probably at least. So that's an hour of time I could be using to do something else during my day, um, an hour plus of each day that I could have back if I weren't distracted popping on and off to Instagram all day. And of course, Instagram is designed to make you want to open it up all the time because it, that's why it doesn't give you a chronological feed. I'm assuming that's why um, they choose to show you something new every time you open the app. Like if you open it, close it, and then go back in a minute later, it'll show you something new so that you stay on the app longer. So you go back on the app. It's like designed for that purpose. So I try not to feel like it's me. <laughs> it's definitely the app is designed and they like do studies on like how to psychologically get you, you know? So 
I don't know, between that and like a lot of their new updates over there where it's like shopping first, art last. I'm, you know, they're owned by Facebook, which isn't my favorite company either. So I'm trying to wean myself off of Instagram a little bit. And for, in order to do that, I'm starting out by this month, not going on Instagram on my phone. I'm allowed to check it on the computer like once a day just to make sure I'm not missing any like, I don't know, actually cool brand opportunities or something. But, or like my out of, um, I have a couple of friends who live out of the country. And so if they're messaging me on Instagram, I want to know so I can reply to them, but I'm not checking it on my phone. I've hidden the app in several folders, so I can't get to it easily. But I definitely have picked up my phone several times already in the last couple of two days that I haven't had Instagram or haven't had access to it and tried to open it and realized it's not there. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. I just have to like sit with my thoughts or something. Ugh. But yeah, I know this isn't very like interesting anymore, like doing a social media detox of any kind, because yeah, everyone, everyone knows that social media isn't 100% uh, is in the source of 100% good in the world, I think. Um, and even for me, like, I think my biggest problem with it is distraction, as opposed to like, um, FOMO, things like that. I don't really get FOMO looking at Instagram, or I'm not really like jealous of anyone else's like polished life or anything like that. Um, especially because no one's like out traveling. And that's what I really want to be jealous about because I wish I was traveling. But uh, really, it's more just like, I need my time back. And there's one way I can, like, the only way I can get more time in a day is to find where I'm wasting it. And Instagram might be one of those, one of those places where I might be wasting a little bit too much time. And in relation to trying to reclaim an hour plus of each day of mine, next year, I want to read at least 25 books. I've been doing so poorly on my to be read pile for the last while. Um, and I would just really like to do better at this. So I'm setting myself an actual numerical goal this time. I want to read 25 books. I want to read more than that, but I'm setting myself like a low numerical goal, hoping that I can hit that, you know, sooner rather than later. So really I want to do 25 plus books. Um, it doesn't have to be fiction or nonfiction or anything like I just, any kind of book. I think people like to do this vague category, um, of how many books read to, as opposed to like pages read, because then you can read really short books and still meet your goal. And I'm here for that. But I just feel like any time I save from not spending it on my phone, I would like to transform that into time I spend reading. So that is one of my major goals for this next year. Then one of my biggest goals for next year actually is a financial goal, another number based goal in some ways. Um, I would like to save a certain amount of money each month and set it aside. And I'm going to try and pay off one of my student loans next year. Now, like I assume many people, I have several different loans that make up my student loan jet debt in general. So again, I have like um, government like based loans that the government will give you to help your, um, get you get your studies here in the US. Um, so I have government loans, which are one thing. And then I have private loans. I only have one actually private loan that's in my name. And my government loans are actually still the majority of my student loan debt. But I would like to try and pay off my private loan this next year. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not supposed to be buying fabric. I need to be on like a low buy in general. I'm not spending money on travel. I'm not spending money on going out to dinner, things like that. So I really want to try and set aside a certain amount each month and try and like, I've been paying this loan for since I graduated university. So for several years now. So it's um, about, I would say it's still over like half the principal is left, I think, uh, total. But I want to just pay off the whole thing, which is like several thousand dollars, um, which is a big goal for me to have. I'm not, I've never, I've actually spoken about this a little bit here on Side Hustle before, but I'm like, I'm not the best at finances. I didn't, uh, you know, it's not something I learned or necessarily always had modeled for me. Um, saving is not something I really like grew up knowing about. Um, so it's definitely like a newer concept to me of like financial literacy is not something I necessarily have, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But I feel I've spoken about this definitely a lot here on Side Hustle. And it's like, I feel a lot of guilt and like uh, burden about my student loans. Uh, I find them rather anxiety inducing, just knowing that, you know, ever since I've started trying to be an adult on my own after university, really, I'm not that I wasn't making attempts at adulting during university, where I finally didn't live here for a little while. It did happen for a brief moment. And the biggest plus of living at home and not having a huge burden like rent to pay each month means that I should be able to be paying down my loans, but I just haven't had a stable enough, stable enough job and income until now. And funny enough, the internet and YouTube is a more stable job than any I've been able to get out there in the real world. 
since graduating college. So now that I finally have a somewhat stable situation and a job I'm really happy in, and it's not like, you know, I've had jobs before where I'm like, okay, the pay is okay, but I clearly don't want to stay here, which is not how I feel about you two. I would love to stay here. I would love to grow and hopefully thrive here online. So um, I'm feeling a little bit more stability in that. If I can just keep up what I have now, um, then hopefully I will be able to get rid of this one boulder I feel like I'm carrying. Um, I just feel, and I, I feel this for myself and also for other people that like, it's hard to feel hope. Um, it's hard to be super excited about your future when you already feel like you have this huge like thing hanging over you. And so, ooh, sorry, mascara. Um, to not have that debt, I don't know what it's like to be an adult who doesn't, who's not already in debt. Like I just don't even know. Ever since I was a kid, ever since I was 18 and took out my first student loans, because that's what everybody did, I've had debt hanging over me. And I just would love to know what it was like to have less of that. So my goal for this next year, my biggest goal probably of the year, honestly, is to pay off one of my loans. So I'm really hoping that I can do that. Of course, only you watching these videos and my patrons supporting me can make that possible. And me holding up my end of the deal and making great content for you all um, is going to make that possible. It just also would open up more opportunities for me because I always feel like almost bad about spending money on anything other than my debt in some ways. So like as far as like starting new business ventures, like investing in having my patterns graded or in starting an actual like pattern company and things like that, or starting any sort of like physical side to the closet historian, I always feel like I should be spending that money to paying off my debt as opposed to starting new ventures. But if I didn't, if I didn't have as much debt, then I wouldn't feel as bad st spending money on like new things. Hopefully that makes some sense. I just feel like um, it might be like, it would be nice to not feel burdened by it all the time anymore. So I'm going to try and eliminate one loan this year. Is the battery dying already? Yes. Am I going to push on? Yes. Is that wise? We'll find out. But in relation to spending some money, I also do want to make another big costume next year. Of course, the cicada gown isn't even technically over yet, but that the materials for that gown were a big inve was my biggest investment probably of 2020. It's hard to say whether the cicada project or my new laptop were more expensive. I did buy a new laptop last year. I won't tell you what kind or it's like some sort of Dell, but I'm not super happy with it anyway, but it was what the best I could do. It was like just when lockdown was like becoming a major thing. And I was like, well, I can't do this without a computer. So I went and got a laptop, but um, that was a big investment. But then also the cicada gown, they might be about equal, honestly. And I've, you know, spent even more time with the laptop. So very essential upgrade there. But I do want to make another big costume next year. I'm not going to give you any hints um, other than to say that I think we're going to be sticking with green. So if you don't like the color green as much as I do, I'm, I'm sorry. But as I've spoken about a little bit here on the channel, costuming um, is both something that I used to be very into and I'm, I've never lost really the passion for. I just uh, lost the kind of motivation for a little while and the funding to be able to do it. But now that I have the funding, thanks to Patreon, I do want to get back into costuming, especially because it seems to be something that all of you enjoy watching as well. Um, I enjoy making them and especially I'll enjoy it now that I'm not going to ever set myself that harsh of a deadline again because when I tried to do everything before Halloween, that was kind of a mistake. So I won't be making that mistake again, lesson learned. But I think it's both a very fun and like uh, interesting challenge for me to dive into doing costuming. And it does very well here on YouTube. It definitely helped grow the channel last year. Um, October was my best month in 2020. And that was the month I was doing the costuming project. So it is something that is like almost a marketing expense for me. Um, doing costuming videos is like better than putting out ads in some ways, like it draws people to the channel and so they discover me. Um, it's good for my discoverability, I suppose. And also I have a fun time doing it. So it's a win-win really there. So I'm gonna go ahead and make another big costume next year as well. And then we come to what I'm going to be calling the, the post-pandemic goals, which is to say if at any time in 2021, lockdown ends and it's safe to actually go out and into the world a little bit more, these are some goals I have for, for then. And the first one of those is to actually start taking language classes. I know this is something I could do even locked down, but I think um, it would be nice to be able to get me out of the house like once or twice a week as well. Um, and so it's much more of like a 
socializing and like getting out of the house kind of goal as much as it is like me wanting to learn a language. And I would really like to learn French because I do have a little bit of French already. I took French in high school, but I would just like to actually learn to properly read and speak French or at least one other language. Um, and then just obviously I've already had a head start with that one. So we'll jump in there. My second post pandemic goal would be to go on a road trip because I wanted to go on one this year, but I did not get to obviously, or this past year, I mean to say, but I did not get to, of course, because it was not safe to do so. Although traveling in your own car is about as safe as we could get in 2020, but of course nothing was open and one couldn't leave the car much and that's less fun. So I would like to go on a road trip once it is safe to do so. Uh, really, I'm waiting to do this until it's safe to go thrifting along the way. I'd like to like take a road trip and then stop at all the little thrift stores and antique stores I might hit along the way. I've never been to the Grand Canyon and I've lived kind of in the Western half of the United States my whole life and I've just never been. So I'd like to go ahead and drive there now that I have a car that's kind of safe enough to do so. I didn't always have a car that everyone around me felt was capable of making it that far and back. But now that I do, and of course my car, is, when you lease a car, you're only allowed to have a certain number of miles, right? But in 2020, I didn't put very many miles on my car, you know? So I think I'm safe to go ahead and take a road trip in that car when it is safe to do so. And then I would like to go for a ridiculously fancy dinner. And I don't mean necessarily that the dinner itself needs to be fancy, only that I wish to dress incredibly fancy to go to it. Because as we know, I've been making some evening gowns and I have a lot of fancy evening stuff I never get to wear. So when it's safe to do so, I would like to go and convince a friend to get really dressed up with me and just go out for really fancy dinner and drinks somewhere and buy fancy again. I don't mean like a gourmet meal. I don't want veal or flan or anything. I just want to get really dressed up. And then lastly for post pandemic goals, again, it's gonna be my 30th birthday next year. And I would kind of like to get a new tattoo uh, as, an, as kind of like a birthday present to myself, but I don't know if that'll be able to be something I can do in 2021. I don't really have an artist picked out even or anything like that. Um, there are different things I know I would like to have. And I know some people don't like tattoos on vintage girls, but like my life, you know, too bad. But I would like to get another tattoo if it is safe and possible to do so next year. And then my last goal for 2021, um, I'm gonna call it a soft goal because if I don't hit this, fine. I, I mean, especially looking over in my last side hustling video, what was holding me back from being able to do this kind of thing last year may still be a problem this year. And that is that I would like to write another book. Um, I kind of always would like to write another book. It's kind of my constant state, but I would like to both prioritize and balance my work life situation to, in a way that makes it possible for me to spend enough time writing to write another book. And also just to, I don't know, give myself that time. Again, I've said I have a responsibility to myself to allow myself to write so that I can be my happiest, best self. The best me, the happiest me is the one who has been writing. So I need to give myself permission to indulge in it because again, life is only so long and I might as well spend as many hours and days of it happy and feeling joy as I can. And for me, I feel the most alive and joyous and happy and like, high almost when I have been writing. And so I just need to go ahead and let that become more of a priority in this next year. And it's my goal to finish the third book or two. I've, I've started it in the sense that I have the first chapter and I have the last chapter and have uh, pages of notes. Um, but I would like to do some research that I need to do in order to feel like I'm ready to write that story. Um, and then also go ahead and like kind of complete that work and like tie a bow on it for now so that I can work on other things. I was speaking about this a little bit last time, but I would like to finish that story, finish my time with those characters for now. I may, you know, dip back in, especially because I have like most of a prequel written for those guys. So I may jump into their, their past in my future sometime, but I would like to write the third book in that series. I don't even think like I'll have to finish it in the sense of like having edited it several times. I don't only really consider a book done until I've edited it all the way through a lot. But if I could just have the first draft of the third book done, I would feel better about then going on and working on new ideas as well. And I do have some new ideas that I would really like to start working on next year as well. Um, it can take me as little time as like eight or 10 weeks to write a book. <laughs> um, so it's, it just depends on things falling into place. 
Um, but I would like to start working on other ideas even as well next year. So that's kind of a big goal to say, I would like to finish a book and then be able to start other ones. But that's my like soft hope and goal for next year is to be able to have that much time writing. And I've had people say on my lookbook sometimes, because I obviously I like make small narratives in some ways to go into my lookbooks. And I've had people say I would like read this story. I want to see the full movie. Um, and weirdly enough, I didn't spend, to be honest, I didn't spend a ton of time working on this story that is in part of part of the noir lookbook just because I didn't get myself enough time to do the noir lookbook really. So I wrote the story kind of quickly, but I actually really want to expand on that one. Um, and I think I could have a really good time writing that as a book. So that's the kind of other idea that I'm hoping to get to next year if I finish the third book of my other series. So if I can finish that up and kind of tie that up for myself and then start working on possibly the millionaire, millionaire, the millionaire millionaire, which we can already see would be a terrible title for this book because it's hard to say. Oh well. But yeah, I kind of want to write The Millionaire Milliner. So we'll see how that goes if I get time to do that. I really, I hope I can stick to it, like can, can be strict with myself and give myself writing time this next year. That should be my biggest goal, honestly. Um, it's that and paying off that loan. Both would alleviate a lot of anxiety for me, honestly, because writing makes me happy and being in debt makes me unhappy. But those are my goals for 2021. Again, it feels optimistic to be making any goals. And there's still a very real chance that like, I could get sick or um, anything could happen. But that's always true every single year. Um, so I, I feel like I have to keep living, especially not knowing how long any of us gets the chance to do so. So for as long as I have the opportunity to keep doing my creative work, uh, making things, sewing things, designing, making videos, and writing, as long as I have the opportunity to do so, I feel like I should. Uh, again, I feel like I owe it to myself in some ways. Um, I don't feel like I'm owed that opportunity, like I don't feel entitled to it, but because I have it, I feel like I better like take advantage of that and like use it. Um, I'm lucky to have the opportunities I do, the time I have, um, and I feel like I would like to put it to good use. So these are my goals for how to do that for the next year. And again, I've managed to go off on another tangent before ending the video. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you again here in 2021. Bye. Again, another huge shout out thanks to my conservator patrons, Che, Karina, Ellen, Carol, Lynn, Margaret, Maria, Nancy, Rebecca, Rhonda, Swingularity, and Tracy. Thank you all so, so much for your support. And thank you to all of my patrons and to all of you who watch these videos, especially these side hustle and diary ones, because goodness. And here I would like to reward you with a small moment of me with my cat in a sink. Um, I have a Jack and Jill bathroom, so therefore two sinks. Um, and one of them is just for her to, to sit in, honestly, like so.